But first, Kira Rudik, member of Ukraine's parliament, joins us from Kyiv. Kira, we wanted to start with you on some more of this video that we just got of this news crew from Sky News coming under attack. Let's watch a little bit more of it. So, Kira, as I watched this, I wanted to know first where it was, and I was a bit surprised to find it was just west of where you are there in Kyiv, and it turned out to be a Russian recon squad, and those rounds just kept coming. Have you seen anything like this? Well, uh, you know that Russians are constantly trying to get into the city, and um, every time after the shelling in the city happens, smaller groups of Russian troops are trying to get in. They are all armored. They are all. They all have weapons, and they are using them. Uh, and it's uh, really unfortunate that they use them against your crew. This is why the resistance uh, groups, as uh, the one that I assembled myself, that's why they are so important. That's why the territorial defense is so important because um, when the army is working. Working on strategic pieces, these uh, groups, these units can um, neutralize smaller Russian groups. This is why we are training to use rifles because we know that we will definitely have to use them. Yeah. And this is what you see right now in the video. This is exactly what's going to happen. This is exactly uh, the cases for which we are training for. Yeah, I, we should uh, point out too this was a Sky News crew and everyone did survive, but two of them were actually shot. And injured. Kira, the last time you and I talked, you were pleading for a no fly zone. The answer came today, and the answer was no. What's your reaction to that? Well, uh, I'm disappointed, of course, but I don't think it's a final uh, final resolution. Uh, we have seen the same thing happening with the sanctions. When for, for four months, uh, all our allies were saying, we are still thinking, we are uh, calculating what when, uh, can we do, what can't we do. And then finally they came along. It was unfortunately too late. And right now, uh, um, if sanctions were imposed at the right time, right now we would have had really different situation. Yeah. So I think with the no-fly zone, it wouldn't be called a no-fly zone. It would be called differently. But we will have to get the air force protection support from our allies otherwise it will be just there is no good outcome like look uh, we are watching right now what happened today at the nuclear plant mm -hmm. there is no sane person in the world who would attack a nuclear plant are we clear on that right yes so he is uh, uh, and i can tell you as a person who lived for 30 years near chernobyl i can tell you uh, radiation doesn't care which kind of what kind of passport are you holding. It doesn't care if your country is a NATO member, no NATO member, and uh, the explosion like that would uh, hurt the whole Europe and yeah. would damage the whole world. So yeah, it's know, frightening, it. and no doubt. Uh, Kira, we were able to talk with the Pentagon spokesman today, Admiral John Kirby, about the military equipment that we're sending to you. Here's more of what he said. What we will do is continue to look for ways to give Ukraine the kinds of security materials they need to better defend themselves. And we're doing it faster. So there's an awful lot being done to help them defend themselves. And they're doing it bravely. They're doing it effectively. You are indeed, Kira. I mean, you're putting up a valiant fight. But Russian troops are now, as I understand it, as close as about 15 miles from Kiev. Are you worried that you're running out of time? Uh, I'm not worried. I'm uh, still angry. Uh, I'm concerned about the nuclear threat more than the other threats. And again, I'm armed and we have, we've been training very hard for the last eight days. So this is under my control, like what's going to happen with me and my crew and my city. However, with the nuclear threat and with the Air Force threat, there is nothing I can do. I can do exactly nothing to protect myself from the uh, from the um, missile going on on my head from the air. And that's why we are asking for this help, because it's totally not under our control. But I want to go back to the nuclear threat. Look, Putin today committed this like 
actually another war crime. And what was the reaction of the world leaders? Uh, President Biden condemned him. Um, then uh, Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson condemned him and UN sent a very angry note. Mm -hmm. Are we like really thinking that this will stop Putin from moving further and raising the stakes? Is this really something that we think that the greatest tyrant of, uh, uh, of the world right now is going to take seriously? No, I can tell you as a person whose country has been at war with Putin for eight years, he only responds to strength. He only responds to the language of power. So why does the whole world try to still hush hush him and hope that he will wake up and say, yeah, I was wrong. Now I'm a good person. Let's back off. Let's stop bombing uh, the nuclear plants. Let's not try to seize the cities and let's uh, take my troops back. Right. There is, it's not going to happen. Sure. We know that and no condemnations will help that. So the only thing that will help right now is the uh, no fly zone one and then additional support that will to push putin and to help ukrainians push him back to where he came from all right kira it's always great to have you ukrainian parliament member still in kiev and i know you stayed up late for us again thank you we'll talk to you soon stay safe my pleasure thank you for watching click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of news nation's fact-driven unbiased coverage